Hey, what's up everybody? Navid Moas is here and today I'm super excited to have Stu McLaren on. He's the former co-founder of Wishlist Member. He's interacted with tens of thousands of membership site owners over the years and he's also ran his own six and seven figure membership sites. And you know, he's worked with so many people, influencers, you know, not so well known people in a wide variety of markets. And he's also the creator of Tribe where he helps, you know, people like, like you create membership sites and create more recurring revenue in your business. And you know, once a year or so, he he runs a tribe workshop. And even if you're not even interested in membership site, I think this is an amazing workshop because the production quality, as someone like myself, I care about this stuff, as you can see here, it's amazing. Like the cinematography and everything is great on the workshop. So I highly recommend you check that out. You can go to navid.me forward slash tribe to just kind of experience that. And obviously Stu is gonna share some great tips there as well. But today we will dive a little bit into some of that stuff and also, you know, some, you know, why, who's tribe for, who's not for and stuff like that. So warm welcome, Stu. Awesome, buddy. Well, listen, thanks for having me. I, I was joking around with you. I'm like, where are you in the world? It's like, like, where is Naveed? <laughs> but uh, I'm, it's yeah. super fun to be able to be here with you. Absolutely. So yeah, if, if people haven't heard too much about you, maybe they have been living on, under a rock and not seeing the impact you're having. Can you tell us like kind of a little bit the quick backstory of, I mean, kind of the wishlist member days and what you were doing there. And I guess what you're doing now a little bit with Tribe as well. Yeah, there's, you know, it's, it's interesting, like, you know, obviously when we look back on, you know, our careers, we start to see like, you know, how one thing led to another. And that's absolutely the case for me. Like I used to have a business where it was a consulting based business and it was going really well. But the problem with it was that I was trading time for money. And so although it was doing really well and I was earning multiple six figures a year, the problem with it was that my schedule was determined by my client's schedule. And even worse is like, when they were busy, I, that meant I was busy. And even worse is like when multiple people were busy or launching at the same time, that meant that my calendar was absolute chaos. And so I literally had just gotten married and my wife and I, we were talking about, you know, raising a family and starting a family and, and the writing was on the wall. Like I could not continue to run that business the way I was running it and be a great husband and or a great father. And so I knew I had to make some changes. So ultimately, when I was talking to some different friends and mentors and, and colleagues and stuff, one of them mentioned that I should start a membership site. And I had no idea what that meant. But he said, like, look, what you're doing for your clients, you could teach so many other people how to do it. And you'd have way more leverage and you wouldn't be trading your time for money. Instead, now you'd be uh, able to have a lot more leverage into your business and support a lot more people. So I started uh, going down that path and I looked at creating my own membership site. Now, I'm like fairly technical, like I'm comfortable around computers and technology. But man, back then, this was in 2008, the technology was not what it is today. Like I was way over my head. I was dealing with things like HT access and server files and settings. And it was just way above me. And I remember complaining to a friend of mine, Tracy, and I used, I said to him, I'm like, dude, like, I just wish this were easier. Like, uh, and he's like, well, like, you know, you know, he's trying to talk me through it. And I said, no, man, I'm struggling. And he's like, well, why don't you just create your own solution? And I said, wait, I, did you not hear what I just said? Like, it's the tech that's actually bogging me down. Like, how the heck would I even go think about, you know, developing? I'm not a developer. And he said to me, he's like, well, Stu, like, you're pretty clear on what you want. He said, I have a developer that works with me. He's like, why don't we just team up and create a solution together? And ultimately, that's what we did. And that became Wishlist Member. And over the next six years, I dedicated my life to growing that company. And we went on to serve tens of thousands of membership site owners. In fact, when I sold my shares in that company, we were uh, serving over 70,000 online communities and membership sites. And so during that six year period, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from being behind the scenes, helping tens of thousands of membership site owners. I learned what like most people were doing and their sites would kind of, they take off and then they plateau or start to drop off. And then I saw what this small group of membership site owners were doing whose sites were growing year over year. And I'm like, what are they doing? So I started paying attention to them and I started to see that they were using a lot of counterintuitive strategies, things that we wouldn't normally think that would work, whether it be with the content or their marketing or their retention, but they were working and they were working year over year over year. And so ultimately what I did was I like, I learned all of that and I took that material and I'm like, I, I wanna try this out for myself. I wanna try it with my own membership site. And so I partnered with uh, Michael Hyatt 
we created a membership site and things just took off. In the first week, we welcomed 1,100 members. In the first year, it was 2,500. And in the second year, it was 4,500. In the third year, it was 6,000. This site just kept growing and growing and growing. And people started saying, Stu, how are you doing this? And ultimately, that led me to, you know, doing a whole bunch of, you know, one-on-one -on -one consulting. And, and then I started doing some workshops. And then that has led me to where I am now, where I'm sharing the tribe, you know, process and formula with literally thousands of people who are launching membership sites successfully in all kinds of different markets from photography and calligraphy to fitness and finance and music and health and art and dog training and so many more. Bottom line is, is that like that set of strategies that I learned from being behind the scenes, working with tens of thousands of people, it works. And so now we've put it into a standardized formula that anybody can utilize, no matter whether you have a product-based business, service-based business, knowledge-based business or community-based business. And that's what gets me fired up every single day is to help people generate a lot more recurring revenue in their business. That's amazing. I can see you're fired up, Stu. That's amazing. And uh, I mean, I actually saw the growth that you had first, like helping a lot of influencers like Michael Hyde, as you were mentioning. And now I've seen, I think I see like every day new people. I mean, I'm in the, you know, first of all, either free, free tribe group or the membership community you created and also the paid one. You have so many people are raving about the success they're having. And this, this is not kind of in marketing or business. This is in all kinds of marketing that you're mentioning. Similar kind of what we are doing also with Virtual Summit Mastery and helping people. And that's something maybe we can get into a little bit. It's a fantastic combination actually to combine totally. like hosting a summit, grow your audience, and then in the back end doing something with a membership site. But before we kind of get there, I wanted to see kind of who is some, this for? Like who, can this work for anyone? Can this work in any market? Who is this primed for what you are doing and what you are teaching, Stu? Well, listen, uh, from our experience, this is working, like we work every single year with literally thousands and thousands of people in all kinds of different markets. We also work with people who have no audience uh, or a tiny audience and successfully launch a membership site all the way to people who have well-established audiences, you know, New York Times best-selling authors who have established multi-million dollar year businesses, but they don't have recurring revenue in it. And so what we do is like, we work with the gamut of, of, of people, but the bottom line is that the strategies are the same. Whether it's you're working with somebody who's in the earlier stages, whether you're working with somebody who's got a more seasoned business, the fact of the matter is, is that like the strategies itself are the exact same. The, the only difference is like where people should put their focus because I'm not a believer that, you know, we can do everything all at once. I'm a believer of like our progress happens in stages. And so it's about identifying like what stage are we at in that progress and then zeroing in on the few things that we need to focus on right there and then to make the most amount of progress. And that's what we ultimately help people do. So we have people who are launching uh, membership sites like uh, Michael Kirkpatrick, as an example, like he helps farmers farmers Navi. farmers he's got a membership site that he helps farmers with and it's had tremendous success you know multi five figure launches with helping farmers and specifically he did one he's got one that helps people grow lettuce faster and easier lettuce crazy anyway we got people in all kinds of different markets like i think of like Leslie Vernick, you know, she's in the relationship market. And so she helps uh, specifically Christian women who are in bad marriages. You know, so she's doing incredible work there. There's examples like Dana. Dana helps uh, parents who've got challenging children. Or there's like Anna Saucier who helps uh, fertility practitioners. Or there's um, Nicholas Wilton who helps people learn how to uh, do fine art painting. Or there's... Uh, um, there's so many examples. Like I, we can go keep going on. There's like Kathy Qualick who helps, you know, people specifically with dog training. Like the, the number of examples in all kinds of different markets are, is, in, is incredible. And here's the crazy part about this. I mean, we, we obsess, the thing that we obsess over, we obsess over helping people get results. And because of that, our obsession, the reason we obsess over it is because we know the most valuable marketing asset in our business has nothing to do with me, has nothing to do with our tribe content. It has everything to do with the stories of people. Just like you said, every single day, people in our community are posting their results that they're getting in their membership sites. And that is the most valuable marketing asset are those stories. And so we used to send a video crew to go and capture these stories. 
In this last 12 months, we've had more success stories than we've ever had before. So much so that we started a whole new podcast that's just sharing these stories every single week. Hundreds and hundreds of people in all kinds of different markets. And the cool part about this is like now you're starting to see businesses who are a product-based business. And we only have to look around, like big name companies that we are familiar with, like the Amazons, the Apples, you know, the Netflix, the Spotify, they're all transitioning towards a recurring revenue model. And we see, you know, companies like just the other day, I was in, um, uh, this was a couple of weeks ago, I was in San Francisco and I'm walking through the mall and I'm, I'm, I will go to get a green juice. And I come up to the, um, the counter and I see the menu and on one side, it says member pricing. And on the other side, it says non-member pricing. So being the membership guy, I said to the girl, I said, what is this whole membership thing? And she's like, well, it's pretty simple. She said, uh, you pay $10 a month and you get two green juices. And every green juice thereafter is at the member price of $5 versus $6 and 50 cents. And I'm like, this is brilliant. So here's a company who's taken one product, their green juice, and has turned it into a membership. And the value there is tremendous. Not only for the members themselves, they save a whole bunch of money, but it's also tremendously valuable for the business itself because they no longer have to hope that people are gonna come back and buy from them. They know for certain that those members will be spending with them every single month. And we see this in product-based businesses. We see this in service-based business, like Mary Claire Fredette, who's come through Tribe. So she has a massage business. The, the challenge that she had is that like some months, it, she is book solid. Other months, it's very sporadic. And so her cash flow is like all over the place. And she never knows what month is going to be good and what month is not. And so she was looking for a way to even out her cash flow. And so the way she did it was, was she rolled out a membership site. And so now she has a small group of members, 17 of them, who come in every single month or who pay her every single month for a one hour massage. But the cool part about it was that she increased uh, um, the value of each of those members, because a lot of them, when they came in for a 60 minute massage, upgraded to a 90 minute massage. And so for her, it's what it's done is just created a lot more stability in terms of the cash flow in her business. And so we see it in product based businesses and service based businesses, of course, in knowledge based businesses. This is where our bread and butter is, is working with you know thousands of people who are teaching other people different things, whether it's teaching them new skills, whether it's teaching them habits, whatever it may be, it's about helping people make progress in some area of their life. And we see uh, this knowledge-based business is primed for a membership site. You talk about uh, the your audience with summits, like, oh my gosh, if you're helping people in a summit, that is the membership site is the perfect back end to that because inevitably people are going to learn a whole bunch in the summit, but Here's where the gap begins to be created. It's learning it is one thing, implementing it is another. And that's why a membership site is so incredible for those of us who are teaching people stuff because it's about supporting people in the journey of implementing it and making progress. And of course, we see it in community-based businesses where you know it's about bringing people who have a shared interest together. Uh, that is a super popular thing. And yes, there are Facebook groups and all that kind of stuff, but people are willing to pay a premium to be surrounded by uh, uh, people in a more deeper, intimate environment. And so we see that uh, taking off as well. So at the, at the end of the day, we see people in all kinds of different markets in all kinds of different uh, areas of their uh, business growth and journey. But the reality of it is, is it's about helping them identify like what are the key things to focus on with where they are in their stage of the business. And that's why we see so much progress. Yeah, totally, Stu. And uh, I mean, I couldn't agree more also what you said there in the beginning with student success. That's something we focus on a lot. We, you know, from time to time, we also do these like high quality success stories and go and shoot stories. And, you know, sometimes just kind of get capturing them on video, but that's kind of the most powerful marketing tool, as you said, not not me, not what's <laughs> really in the program so much. It's like helping people get results. That's what matters at the end of yes. the day. But really what I wanted to kind of focus on, there's kind of, I guess, two types of people here. Might be someone starting from, from scratch, like in, in a knowledge-based business, for example, they want to build their brand authority. So it, can they launch a membership site? I know some people out there, they might say, you need 10,000 email subscribers before you do this and stuff like that. So what's your philosophy on this? I've heard different schools. So I want to kind of start there first and then see kind of what, you, what your thoughts are. Well, 
you know, truth be told, I mean, I used to believe that. I used to believe that you needed an audience of at least 5,000 people to have success with a membership. But here's what I've learned, and I'm so grateful for getting smacked upside the head by our tribe uh, in learning this lesson, is you don't need tens of thousands. You don't need thousands. In fact, you only need a few hundred. And we have tons of examples of this, like Wendy Batten. So Wendy Batten, she helps paint store retailers. Like we're talking like a tiny niche paint store retailers. These are bricks and mortar stores that sell paint. That's her market. And so she didn't have tens of thousands or thousands. She had literally 400 and roughly 460 people in her audience. But when she launched her membership site, she welcomed 59 of them generating $2,800 a month in month number one. Now, over the course of this past 12 months, that membership has grown to over 100 plus members, part of her membership. But it just goes to prove the point. You don't need tens of thousands or thousands. She just had a few hundred. Or there's Marianne Kane. Marianne Kane, she had some urgency to launch her membership site because she was having a baby. And her membership site helps women with kettlebell workouts. And so she launched hers. She had about 250. She welcomed 52 members into her membership site. Again, helping her generate a ton of momentum. Or one of my favorite stories is uh, Anna Saucier, who was at our, our Tribe Live event uh, last year. And she was so inspired because all these stories of people that I talk about, they're real people. And so she was hearing from them, seeing them speak on stage, and and uh, she was getting so inspired by hearing their stories of just not getting it perfect, just getting it going. And so she said, you know what, I'm going to launch. I'm going to do it right here while I'm at the event. And now, listen, she didn't have sales videos. She didn't have a webinar. She didn't even have a sales page. didn't even have a checkout page. None of that stuff. And she definitely did not have a big audience. She had 326 people her audience, 326. But she went for it anyway. And her goal uh, was to generate $5,000 in the in the 20 in the 20 first 24 hours. So here's what she did. She used one of our founding member scripts. She was inspired by Jamie Swanson. We can talk about her after if you want. Jamie Swanson was sharing how she has uh, utilized this founding member script. And so uh, Anna said, I'm going to use it. And, and so she she basically took that script. And it's basically a, a script that says, hey, um, uh, here's here's the vision for what I'm looking to create, and it casts the vision for the community and the membership, and it's and it's up front. You're up front and saying like, you know, I don't have everything figured out, but here's why I'm so passionate about this. And if you'd like to join me as a founding member, uh, I'll you know forever grandfather you in at the at the founding member price. So when we do raise it, uh, when we go to the general public, you will always have the founding member price. So essentially, she used the script, obviously, you know, massaged it and so forth. Um, and she sent it out to her audience. And the call to action was really simple because she didn't have anything else set up. She said, if you want to join me as a founding member, just send me a direct message. They would send her a direct message and she would send them a PayPal link. And here's the crazy part. And I mean, 326 people, not a massive audience. She generated $5,024 in that 24 hour period. And that has given her tremendous momentum again as she continues now to grow her membership. So I share it with you because there are endless numbers of stories of people, not with massive audiences, but with a few hundred. But here's the advantage you have with a smaller audience. And people don't think about this, but it's an absolute real world advantage. And that is, is that you will see way higher conversion rates with a smaller audience than you ever will with a bigger audience. It's because you're able to develop a more intimate relationship with that audience. And in the world of membership sites, we talked about it, we just hammered it home, and that the most important marketing asset you can have in your business are the stories. And so in the beginning, I love starting with small audiences. I love getting people in, and I love being able to go uh, in, uh, in an intimate environment and really help them get results because those stories that you get from those people are going to be massive for you as you begin to really scale and grow the membership. So in the beginning, it's all about like doing the best with what you got available to you. And I can tell you, you can create massive momentum, not just with tens of thousands, not just with thousands, but with a few hundred people. Yeah, that's incredible. And also, I'm, I'm really impressed. And that says something about you and the kind of the community you're building. You actually you have thousands of members. <laughs> you remember them by name and their stories. You're like me. I'm, I'm also, I, I remember kind of the people who share and stuff like that. That's actually not so many influencers they they remember all their stories by name like you so that's also says something about kind of kind of a tribe you're building with well, dude i i love these people man like i'm i'm obsessed we yeah. you know we take great pride in the stories and the people and their progress because here's the thing for me this is much this is much bigger than even just helping those business owners it's about like the impact that the extended ripple that is happening 
through membership sites. Because when I think of like we we mentioned Leslie earlier, she's helping these women, these these uh, women who are in broken marriages. And I think about like the ripple effect of that. Like if she can help those women and and the and repair those relationships or get out of a dangerous relationship and the impact that it has on the families and the kids. Or I think about we mentioned Dana uh, and her and like helping uh, parents who have challenging kids and the ripple effect that that will have not only on the, the that family unit but on those kids themselves and their future. Or I think about like. Even Levi Kachula, he has a guitar membership site that has exploded uh, since uh, Tribe. You know, uh, he took it from a $30,000 a month membership, which was doing pretty good. But in the months after Tribe, he went from $30,000 to $52,000 to $74,000 to over $100,000. Now it's a multi-million dollar membership with 6,000 plus members. But here's what I love about his membership. Yes, it's about learning guitar, but he specifically helps serve veterans. And he does these amazing things because the future of membership sites, by the way, uh, is combining both online and offline components. And so he started experimenting with these and he started having these jam sessions and he's got these vets who are learning a guitar, dusting off their old skills and they're getting up on stage and they're jamming together. And he's created this unbelievable community and it is transforming lives. And I just share this with you because what we do is much bigger than just the money. It's what the money makes possible and the impact that that extended ripple has. And so I am very deeply connected to that. So when you say like, when you ask about like remembering these people, yeah, I remember them because I'm passionate about them. I adore them and I love the impact that they're having and I'm deeply connected to it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think you should be. And I mean, and you should like, if you're, if you're watching this and you think, okay, is, is any program for me, like, I mean, tribe, you should definitely join a program that, you know, they actually, you know, uh, you know, the teacher or the educator actually, they care about you. They want you to get results. And that's how what we believe in with virtual sign mastering, the programs we offer. That's exactly what Stu does with tribe as well. So I wanted to kind of shift gears a little bit. You talked about the beginners and people have a very small audience. What if you already, let's say, a hosted a summit, you maybe have, you know, a few thousand people on your list. Maybe you even have an online course. You have maybe even a high ticket offer or something like that. And maybe even making money every month from these things, but it's not actual, you know, recurring revenue. So how can, actually it's a little personal because I, I wanted to kind of, I, I have, met, you know, a high ticket offer with VSM. We make money every month. We have applications coming in and stuff like that. And we sometimes sell our existing customers as well, obviously, so get them to be, become repeat buyers. But how can someone like me or someone in my audience who are in a similar situation add the recurring revenue with a membership site? What, what will you do there? Well, it's pretty straightforward and simple because if you, uh, let's just take somebody who is running a course. Like, I have no doubt that if you are running a course and you pour your heart and soul into that course and look to really support people, there is no doubt in my mind that you've experienced what I'm about to share. And that is you get toward the end of the course and your people start to almost like panic. They're almost like asking questions like, well, wait a minute, like what happens next? Like, are, you know, are, are we still gonna have this, this community? Well, wait, wait a minute, like I, I'm gonna be trying to implement this on my own. Can I, can I still get support? Like they start asking these types of questions cause they're in panic cause they realize like, well, the end of the road is right here. Like now, now they have to be out on their own implementing and that scares the living crap out of people. And so here's why a membership site is so important, not only for you as the business owner, but for the success of your people, because it's about being with them now on the journey of implementing what they have learned. It's the natural extension to what you have already done. So if you've got a course and you've already taken people through that, that is amazing. But there's this huge gap between learning what to do and implementing what they have learned. And that gap gets filled with a, by a membership site because it holds people's hands. And what you're gonna find is that when you go deep with your people like this, with a membership site, they are going to see more progress than ever before, which is only gonna help you, again, backfill, if you will, the course, and of course, people roll into the membership. And so at the end of the day, like when people are making progress, they do not ever want to leave a membership site. I've never heard of somebody canceling from a membership site because they're making too much progress. So as long as you focus on helping people make progress, they're never gonna leave. And what that does for you as a business owner is it creates a tremendous amount of stability. Tremendous amount of stability. Because no longer are you going through this fluctuation of like a launch and no launch, a launch and no launch. Like as an example, like Andrew Krauss over in Australia, 
I mean, he had a great business, but it was very much dependent on the success of his launches. And he had one launch in particular that did not go well. He had a bunch of personal challenges that was going through that he was going through at the time, specifically like a uh, a breakup, and uh, it it was just it was a challenging situation, and the launch did not go well. And here's what happened: is it created a whole bunch of cascading effects, meaning like it put him in a serious financial pinch. And so what happened was he realized there and then that like he couldn't continue to keep going through this up and down roller coaster when it came to his income. And so he needed more stability. So he rolled out a membership site. Now his market, he serves real estate agents and it's a very simple membership site. He essentially provides them Facebook ad templates each and every month that those real estate agents, they don't have to think, they just use the templates because they know they work. They swap out the details for the houses and off to the races. And so it's a super easy membership site. But here's what happened is that created tremendous stability in his in his business. And so then what he did was he realized like, heck, what I'm doing for real estate agents, I could do for financial planners. And so he started a second membership site for them. And the same thing applies. And so, you know, he went through that roller coaster, evened it out with memberships. Another great example is Susan Garrett. Same thing. But she had very successful launches. But it, she still felt the stress and the pressure of those launches performing. And so when she rolled out her membership, I love this because she rolled it out to a small test list first. So she didn't roll it out to her whole audience. She rolled it out to a test list of 1,600 people. Now, admittedly, these were 1,600 of her best clients and customers. These were people who had already gone through you know, some of her courses. But she rolled it out. But Susan has an unbelievable relationship with her audience. And of the 1,600, over 1,100 of them signed up at $30 a month. And again, this is for dog training. So you can do the math on that in terms of like immediate income that that added to her business every single month. So if you've got a course, you absolutely should be thinking about a membership site because not only is it gonna help your people get better results, which is what we're all after, but it's also gonna give you tremendous stability in your business. And you know, if you've already got an established audience, I can tell you that your people are wanting more from you. I mean, how many of us have seen a great speaker or listened to somebody on a virtual summit and thought, gosh, like I would love to learn more or read a book and we're like, ah, oh, I would love to follow up with the author on this. But very few people have anything to continue with them on an ongoing basis to take what we've learned and go deeper and develop that level of mastery. Because here's the bottom line, just because you heard it once doesn't mean that you're going to have it mastered. I mean, just because I learned how to play guitar does not mean I'm gonna be the next Eric Clapton. I've gotta work at it, I've gotta implement it, I've gotta practice it, and that's what a membership provides. It provides that safe playground for people to really master the material. And so it is a service to your people and your audience, and it's also a tremendous benefit to you as a business owner because it adds that stability. We got tons of examples, like from New York Times bestselling authors to you know uh, people who've got lar large influencers, who've got um, you know large uh, audiences on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, uh, and and leveraging those audiences to create membership sites. Bottom line is that like it is the best business model, not only for your people to help them get better results, but also for you as a business owner as well. That's awesome. And I actually wanted to, I've seen this come up sometimes in your community. Like why isn't Tribe a membership? You know, like, I mean, I've seen that come up sometimes, but I think you have, you know, kind of your, your response. I've seen your response to this. It's actually a very good response. So maybe you can share that here. Why is Tribe a membership? And maybe you already have some kind of, Thing, like you mentioned here, like you have, Tribe is an online program course, and then you basically have something in the back end where people can, you know, get ongoing support afterwards after the program is over. So, can you talk to, to that a little bit as well? Yeah, it's about like identifying the path for people. And so, for us, just like what we're saying, what what's the benefits of a course? A course goes deep where you're teaching people new material and you're immersed with them during a period of time. And that's exactly what we do with, with Tribe as an example. Is we go deep. We we, we download everything that we know uh, about growing a membership site. And we we specifically focus on the 20% that's going to get 80% of the results. So we don't get into the weeds about everything. What we focus on are the few things that are going to get the biggest bang for your buck. And so that's what the course does is we go deep on that. 
But inevitably, just like what we've talked about, like there's a, a period of time now where people are going to be out on their own implementing. And so we do have a membership site that supports people uh, after the actual course. And so we, we're like the hair club for men. Not only do we create it, but we use it too. It's the same thing. When I'm teaching this stuff, we are absolutely using it and modeling it as well. The only reason that people just don't know about our membership site is because it's only offered to people who have come through our course. Because for us, like we go deep on this material and then the membership is all about supporting them in the implementation of it. And so there are different types of membership sites and you gotta get clear on what type is right for you. Because there's a front end focused membership which is different than a back-end focus membership. So we have a back-end focus membership, but if we had a front-end uh, focus membership, the, the content strategy, the marketing strategy would be totally different than what it is with our existing membership. So there's a, there's a reason that we have a course, and it's because we go deep with people in teaching them about our concepts and our formula. But similarly, we do support people on the back-end with a back-end membership as well. That's awesome. I mean, that's actually gets some, that's a really interesting approach. Actually, I don't think so many people have talked about like the front end and back end focused. Is there any differences in I guess the price points of memberships like that? Obviously, it depends on market and it depends what you offer. But you know, I think you know my audience here who's watching, they would like to know a little bit what's what what is good price points to think about or anywhere. I mean, I know you talked that about this even deeper in tribe, but maybe a little bit hitting on that here as well. Yeah, well, again, let's let's go back to front end and back end focus. So if it's a front end membership, generally the price point is going to be a little bit lower. And the reason being is because you're trying to get as many people into that because the front end membership site really serves as a way to not only uh, help people, but also it's a it's a great front end for any back end products that you may have, because those members are going to be your highest qualified people for any high ticket offer that you may have. So you, we want to get as many people in there. So typically what you're going to see again, this varies dramatically dramatically depending on the market but we see anywhere as low as like I've seen like five dollars a month all the way up to I would say on average for a, a, a front-end membership we're looking at anywhere from five dollars a month all the way up to a hundred dollars a month those are that's typically the range now for a back-end membership site the price points are actually much higher typically we'll start on the low end of roughly fifty dollars a month and we'll go upwards of a thousand or five hundred to even a thousand dollars a month um, and so what's fascinating is that like with a back-end membership site, you're gonna earn a lot more per member, but you're gonna have fewer members because typically they're gonna come on the back end of a, a, a course. On the front end membership, the volume is gonna be way higher, but the price point is gonna be lower. So they both have their advantages and disadvantages, and it's not that one is better than the other, it's just about getting clarity around the purpose that the membership site has in your overall business strategy. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I mean, that that gives me actually some ideas of what you can do. And I think this this is not so often talked about, like in terms of like the front end and back end and like the different price ranges and how it fits into your business. So maybe in my case, if I had something with Virtual Site Mastery, I could continue to offer, I mean, we have a coaching program with ongoing support, but maybe I could offer something different with like a back end focused one after they have gone through it. They maybe have success already, similar to kind of what you are doing with Tribe, I guess, and have something extra yeah. for them. So I think that could possibly work work for me but again you kind of got to know your business and where you're focusing and stuff like that so I think that's very very important here but I wanted to get into a little bit I know you teach a lot about this also in the free workshop even more in the paid program tribe obviously but uh, you know they how do you create the content or like do you have a what, what's your content strategy for creating for for like I know you're busy how do you actually come up with new content for you know the membership you guys offer and how, how does your kind of students do that as well yeah, well, great question. So the, your content strategy is really driven by the type of membership site that you're creating. So we've talked about front end and back end, but within there, there's actually different membership models. There's like what we call like a publisher model, a UPS model, a coaching model, a community-based model, a combo. There's lots of different types of models, a drip model. But you know, so getting clear on the type of model that you have is really gonna uh, help you get clarity around the content. But in terms of crafting a content strategy, this is a really important takeaway that I want everybody to make note of. And that is, is that like oftentimes as content creators, we think the more content we create, the more value we provide. But it's actually not true. In fact, the number one reason that people will leave a membership site, and I've seen this across all kinds of different markets, the number one reason that people will leave a membership site is not because your content isn't good. It's because they're overwhelmed by the volume of content. So as soon as that seed of 
doubt is planted that they can't keep up. It's just a matter of time before they quit. So this is an interesting uh, and it's counterintuitive to the way we think, because normally we would think the more we give, the more value we create. But that's not true. And this is what I want everybody to write down. The value does not come from the volume of content you provide. The value comes from the speed of which people are able to implement the information you provide. So it's not about volume. It's about speed of implementation. And so that is good news for all of us, because that means that like not only is it a disservice to provide a ton of content for our people and that they're they're going to quit and they're not going to make the kind of progress. But that means that we don't have to create as much content. Now, even with that said, there are smart ways to do this. Like when I partnered with New York Times bestselling author Michael Hyde, he's just coming off this New York Times bestselling book. He's in high demand as a speaker. He's getting asked to speak all around the country. And in any given year, he'd speak anywhere between 30 to 40 times a year. So you had a day on the front and a day on the back for travel. That meant he was gone over 100 days a year. So when I met with him, like he is ridiculously busy already. And on top of that, he was publishing his blog every single day of the week. And he had a weekly podcast. So this guy had no time to be able to produce ongoing content or to be stuck on any kind of content treadmill. Now, here's the good news for everybody. We developed a content strategy for him that essentially would require six days a year, six days, six, to produce a year's worth of content. And here's how we did it. We would have three two-day video shoots. And during those video shoots, we were back to back to back to back to back recording. But after those video shoots, that would produce anywhere between six to eight months worth of content. And then that would just get scheduled. And so when I um, exited my partnership with Michael, all in good terms, I just I, I was shifting gears to focus on what I'm doing now. When I left, we had more than a year's worth of content already in the queue. So if they did nothing, if they created no new content from that day forward, they'd still have new content coming out for their members all throughout the year. And so a content strategy is really important. This is not something where we just kind of like throw a whole bunch of stuff into a member's area and kind of like uh, hope our members find some value and off they go. No, we want to be very intentional about what we're providing, how we're providing it, and the timing of what we're providing. And I'll just give your listeners, you know, just a quick couple rules of thumb. Number one is that I would never provide more than one primary piece of content per week. And on top of that, I would never exceed more than an hour's worth of content in a week. If you get beyond an hour, you're expecting way too much of your people because there's no way that people can not only carve out a time to consume that, but there's also the time to implement that. And that's on top of everything else they got going on. Look, I am a father with two young kids. I can tell you that these spare hours are far and few between. So when it comes to content, we don't want to overload people. We want to give them bite-sized pieces of content that is easy to consume and easy to manage so that they can implement and get results. And so even in, you know, in our tribe experience, one of the major reasons why we have so many people having success, like hundreds and hundreds of people, is because we are very intentional about the content strategy so that we deliver high value content in a way that's easy to consume, that creates very quick implementation and gets results. And the same thing applies for a membership site. And so the bottom line is this, is that like, it's not about the volume of content. It's about the speed of implementation. It's about people being able to implement the content. That's number one. Number two is that less is more. Less is more. So don't overwhelm them because if you overwhelm them, that's when you're going to see high turnover. But if they're making progress, if they're consuming the content and they're making progress, they will stick. And lastly, given that, it's about getting smart with how and when you produce the content. We don't want to be doing it on a you know ongoing basis where you're constantly scrambling. Like that, to me, I see that sometimes happen with people that haven't gone through Tribe. And what, what it's an indicator to me is they just haven't given their content uh, strategy serious thought. It's just kind of like they've been flying by the seat of their pants and just kind of hoping and winging it and, and so forth. And uh, bottom line is that like with our content strategy, we want to have a strategy so that we can get ahead and so that we, it's not creating stress. It's actually stress-free because we're so far uh, ahead of ourselves and our membership. So hopefully that gives your, your audience and listeners uh, a few tips and ideas in terms of how to manage the content and how to do it in a smart way.
Oh, for sure, Stu. This this is great and also counterintuitive. Kind of a lot of people they think they're gonna just throw content at them, but I mean this makes a lot of sense to just kind of have bite-sized content in a membership and not kind of overwhelm where everyone's just there busy. They can obviously they get overwhelmed by all these free content out there. So in your membership, you're gonna give them this path. And I know you go really deep on this also in the program in the can workshop. I, can you also give you one example talk. of this, Naveed? Sure. So, so uh, I. You know, I'm thinking of Paul Evans. So Paul Evans runs a membership site called Teen Life Ministries. And essentially what he does is he helps youth ministers. And in the beginning, when he launched his membership site, he had a whole bunch of stuff inside this members area. He had like he was producing content on a weekly basis. He had a community and, you know, he was uh, active trying to get, uh, you know, people engaged in the community. He had a bunch of other deliverables. But he sent out a survey to his members. And he said, like, if there was only one thing, one thing in the membership site that you could keep, what would it be? And so the overwhelming majority of people responded and identified the one thing that his members valued the most. And here's what it was. His members are youth ministers. And so bottom line is that the vast majority of them do this on a uh, part-time basis. They have a full-time job and then they are a youth minister on the weekends. And so they don't have a lot of time. And so the number one thing that they valued from the membership was a PowerPoint um, presentation that Paul would give his members each and every week. And essentially, the ministers would download that PowerPoint, and it was basically their sermon for the Sunday. And so he ended up stripping everything away from the membership site. So like 75% of what he was providing, he even got rid of the community because people didn't weren't there for the community. They didn't need the community. And he just focused on the delivery of that PowerPoint presentation, therefore cutting his workload down dramatically. And he did not see drop off because of it, because his members were only there for the one thing. And so it's interesting because it's like, again, as you pointed out, Naveed, sometimes we think that like we got to provide all this content, all this value. But at the end of the day, it's about identifying the needs of your people and delivering the content in such a way that it meets those needs in the in the um, in the shortest time frame so that they can use it and implement it. That's exactly what Paul did. Cut a ton of work off his uh uh, work schedule and made it certainly a lot easier for his members to find exactly what they were looking for. Yeah, totally. And I love that. And as we shift gears here and kind of wrapping up this, I obviously do it once a year. He's hosting this tribe workshop that's free to sign up for. So you can go to navid.me slash tribe. And Stu, what can people expect in this besides the high quality production your team, you and your team, they're known for? What what can, what are they going to learn in this free workshop and, and what what's going down there? Yeah, so it's a three-part workshop. So part number one, we go deep in helping you identify whether your market is a good market for a membership site. So we have like a whole assessment where we walk you through it and we talk you through like the characteristics of a great market. And this obviously is very important to know because you don't want to be starting a membership site in a market that's not going to be uh, conducive for a great membership. So in that first part, that's what we go deep on. Second part of the workshop, we go walk you through the number one piece that you need in your content for every single membership site, especially if you have a knowledge-based membership. If you're missing this one ingredient, you're gonna be in serious trouble. This one ingredient drives not only your content strategy, it drives your marketing, and it absolutely uh, drives your retention. And so we walk you through what that one piece is, and so we start, walk, you know, we'll tell you what it is, we walk you through it, and we help you start crafting it for yourself. And then in the third part of the workshop, we pull back the curtain. This is our whole membership blueprint where we show you the five areas of a successful membership site. And we go in detail about what they are. We give you a downloadable mind map, which in granular detail maps everything out. In fact, that could be she watched uh, just this one part of the workshop, took the download, the, the blueprint, and she used it to launch her membership site. And I'm telling you, we have multiple people like Thembi who have just used the blueprint to launch their membership site. And that happens in the third part of the workshop. So we do this one time a year. This is it. It is an amazing all hands on deck experience. I'm available. I will be doing uh, Facebook lives and Q and A's to help people go through the material, answer any questions that pop up. But we do this one time a year. And when we do, we are all hands on deck. It's going to be amazing. 
Yeah, I love it. And I know you're gonna be super active also in the free, you have a free Facebook group part of this. I mean, the workshop itself is amazing. I think you have some comments and stuff like that there. So highly recommend you sign up for this. Go to navid.me forward slash tribe and you learn a ton. And you see also, you know, kind of behind the scenes of a really successful and really cool launch and how you should actually serve your audience. So that's what I recommend. So thanks so much too for coming on here as well and sharing some value with my audience. Well, thank you, buddy. And listen, I'm super pumped and excited for the people in your audience because like, listen, summits are a great way to get people into your world. And now it's about extending that learning experience and serving them over time with a membership site. And that's what I am excited to help your people do because I know not only the value it's gonna create for their audiences, but I also know the stability that's gonna create for them and their business. And that for me is the number one reason why we should all be looking towards adding recurring revenue to our businesses. Awesome. Thanks, Stu.